come with us this time to Liverpool for a cheeky overnight stay at the start of the Christmas shopping season. We take in the must-do sights from the Albert Dock to the historic waterfront from a fabulous rooftop venue. And as always, we find some fabulous and some rather quirky places to eat and drink. The highlight though was a stay at the uniquely themed Titanic Hotel in the historic docks. So no wonder we had to recharge in their impressive spa afterwards, so come explore with us. So we arrived by train into Liverpool Lime Street. It's just over two hours from London, a little less for us, thankfully. Walking past St. John's Beacon with its viewing gallery, links in the description if you're interested. We strolled through the city centre, taking in all of the festive decorations popping up around the city. To our first stop, Mamasan, for a spot of lunch. Not only did we choose this fabulous venue for its impressive decor, but also for its set lunch menu, an absolute steal at £15 per person for two courses. To start, we have black pepper and ginger squid and salt and pepper cauliflower. And for mains, we both opted for the pad thai and all of the food was absolutely fantastic. To be fair, our drinks bill far exceeded the cost of the food but it was very, very much worth it in this fantastic venue. We would definitely come back to try out that roof terrace in the summer or for dinner, and I'll put links in the description to their absolutely great menu. Suitably recharged and slightly stuffed, we waddled our way into the city centre to explore the shops for some retail therapy. And the city certainly makes a great effort in getting into the festive spirit where we also took some time to explore Liverpool One, a substantial and impressive shopping centre for a city centre location. Plus, Liverpool One connects directly over to the Albert Dock. However, we were going to do all of our sightseeing the next morning. But our last stop was the historic buildings known as the Three Graces, including the iconic Royal Liver Building. We had timed this perfectly with sunset to head up to Liberty Rooftop. Now there are a number of rooftop bars, including Oh Me Oh My, all of which have fantastic views, but many close down during the winter months. Liberty, however, has taken the novel and frankly genius approach to turn their entire rooftop into a winter wonderland and Christmas village where you can book one of their festive chalets with heaters so you can cozy up while still enjoying the incredible Liverpool skyline. Best of all, as it was a quiet Sunday evening and only the start of the festive season, we had the place pretty much to ourselves. These chalets are no doubt popular and would have to be booked in advance at the weekend, however, they let us use them free of charge. So Lorraine could write to Santa to try and get herself off the naughty list. And as night fell, we were treated to a light show of ever-changing colours over the Three Graces. Which we also got to appreciate at ground level whilst waiting for a taxi to take us to check in at our hotel. Which was only a short 5-10 to 10 minute journey north of the city centre, but certainly not walkable and especially not with cases. Arriving at the Titanic Hotel, located in the converted Stanley Dock warehouses. The building was certainly atmospheric and impressive, however, would come film it the following morning, so appreciate it in the daylight. As much of this area is being regenerated, along with the nearby tobacco warehouse apartments and the new Everton Football Club Stadium nearby. Upon entry, you get an immediate sense of the faithful restoration work and the considered industrial theming that has been undertaken here to bring this historic building back to life. However, it was getting late and we had a dinner reservation to get to, so it was time to check in. But even heading to our room, the characterful theming continues throughout this impressive hotel. 
So starting in our bathroom, it was spacious enough. However, considering the sheer square footage to only have a single sink and only a stand-up shower with no separate bath did seem like a bit of an afterthought. We had upgraded from the classic room to a superior dockside room gave us a significantly larger room and many of these actually come in split level layouts. However, all room categories regardless come with both white star line and titanic memorabilia throughout, which along with the vaulted ceilings and exposed brickwork really brings the industrial heritage to life. The superior dockside room one gets you the much larger footprint complete with this large sitting area but also most importantly the dockside view complete with this great window seat where you can really appreciate the historic setting of the hotel so after a freshen up and unpacking it was time to head to dinner but in our rush would be very easy to miss these great features like these bulkhead doors Heading now down to the lobby, we had time to appreciate the great industrial touches, the high ceilings and hand-blown glass chandeliers. And round to the nautically themed rum bar. After all, what else would a sailor drink? However, we would have to wait until later to appreciate this great setting as our dinner reservation was calling. Ready for dinner? Ready as I'm starving. The maritime touches and nautical quotations continue throughout the restaurant along with the occasional model of the great ocean liner itself. Stanley's Bar and Grill is the main restaurant which serves both dinner but also breakfast as well. We booked a one night stay package, including breakfast and a three course meal from their Dockers set menu. We also did our usual trick of booking in on a Sunday night through to Monday, which worked out considerably cheaper than booking over a peak weekend. Warehouse vibes continue throughout the restaurant and in the summer months would no doubt have a great view of Stanley Dock. Docker's set menu had a good selection of items. I started with the tureen and Lorraine started with the olives and hummus so she could save herself for our main where we both went for the steak. And to be fair, all the menu items we had for both dinner and breakfast were fantastic. Afterwards, we headed to the rum bar for a nightcap. However, as a Sunday night, the bar did shut surprisingly early, which when you're in such an isolated location as this hotel was not really ideal. As a result, I was up somewhat early the next morning, so as promised, took a wander to take in a tour of this fantastic setting. And in the daylight hours, you can really begin to appreciate the level of detail and attention that has gone into this faithful restoration. I walked a tour of a circular loop around this site, including the drawbridge into Stanley Dock itself. Towers and chimneys just add to the feel of the industrial heritage of the site. And opposite is Tobacco Dock, where they are renovating swanky new industrial apartments, if you have deep enough pockets. Once the regeneration of this area is complete, it will very much have the same vibe as the Albert Dock in the city centre. The hotel will also be a great upscale option for anyone visiting the new football stadium once complete, but until then, be prepared for a more hotel-based stay. However, it was now time for some indulgence at the rather impressive Maya Blue Wellness Spa Suite at the hotel. Spa, of course, offers a vast array of treatments to experience. However, many guests just choose, like us, to use this stunning wellness suite. This includes a pool with hydrotherapy jets, sauna, steam room, and thunderstorm shower complete with lighting effects. Hotel guests can access this for the first and last two hours of the day for £20 at time of filming. 
Outside of these times, the spa facilities are exclusively for those guests having spa treatments. So after rejuvenating in the spa and having our included breakfast at Stanley's Bar and Grill again, we took to exploring the hotel in the daylight. Great thought and attention to detail has been given to bringing the backstory of the famous ocean liner to life around this hotel. And if you appreciate this level of theming, look out for our future video of its sister hotel in Belfast next to the famous Titanic exhibition. But now, all checked out, it was time for us to leave and head into town after a fantastic stay at this unique hotel. Arriving at the Albert Dock, we were greeted by some of their Christmas decorations that had begun to appear. And they also have a festival of light walking trail during the festive period. However, for November, the weather had certainly been on our side throughout this weekend, and it was a gorgeous, bright winter's day. There are no shortage of hotel options, both at the Albert Dock and also the city centre, and both are equally easy for exploring both locations. Ahead of us in the first building, for those culture vultures amongst us, are two different museums, the International Slavery and Maritime Museums, both of which are free entry. There is no shortage of restaurants and cafes scattered around the historic dock. Or, like us, just take a long, leisurely stroll, taking in the fantastic heritage and architecture of this local landmark. Moving round the dock, on the far opposite side of these buildings, you will also find the Beatles Story Museum. Although we chose not to visit, for many it is a pilgrimage when in the city of Liverpool. The interactive experience celebrates the career of the Fab Four and was £19 per person at time of our visit. In keeping with Liverpool's maritime traditions, we thought it only fair to find a suitable venue to have something to eat. Although there was an entrance on the inside of the docks, take a stroll round to the far entrance by the Beatles Story Museum to get a full appreciation of this quirky venue. Even the likes of Captain Jack Sparrow would feel at home in this rather characterful bar and restaurant. Whether just stopping for a pint in the bar or sitting down to eat in the restaurant, the eccentric decor continues. After checking out the menu, which looked fab, we grabbed ourselves a prime table seat by the big glass windows to enjoy lunch with a great view of the Albert Dock. And for such a touristy location, top marks to the Smuggler's Cove for great location, brilliant food and fab service. Feeling like it would not be out of place on the set of Pirates of the Caribbean, even a trip to the restroom was somewhat of an experience with all the various memorabilia. The venue also had outdoor seating on the dock, however being November was a little fresh for that, but we'll leave links in the descriptions so you can check this place out. Exiting on the waterfront on the far side, you will also find Liverpool Arena and numerous other hotels, perfect for combining a city break with a concert. And remember, if you're enjoying this video, please, we ask you hit that like and subscribe button to help us bring you more videos like this in the future. We really appreciate the support. Circling back round along the waterfront, we were met with an eclectic mix of sculptures and statues, which can only mean one thing, time for more culture. The Tate Liverpool is also free to enter. However, this location in the remaining corner of the Albert Dock is currently closed for renovation as we finish our complete circumnavigation of the dock. However, no need to fret as it has temporarily relocated to the Royal Institute of British Architects. 
which just happen to be these black buildings on the opposite side of the water at Pier Head. So leaving the Albert Dock behind, we cross over the bridge to continue our walk along the historic waterfront onto Pier Head. And although a little brisk, the weather continued to hold for us. Contrast to the historical architecture of the Albert Dock, here you are met with the striking and imposing design of the Museum of Liverpool. Again, another museum that is free to visit, celebrating the history of Liverpool and its people, but we sadly did not have the time to fit it in. Here you will also find smaller versions of the Super Lamb Banana, frankly, bizarre sculptures dotted all around the city. And coming round, we end up on the far side of the Three Graces, where we were the previous evening, and then leading down to Pier Head and the famous ferry across the Mersey. But no trip to Liverpool would be complete without a visit to the very famous statue of the Fab Four before heading back into the city centre to get our train. Ending up back where we started at Liverpool 1, to save a trek back to the Titanic Hotel, you can always store your bags at the baggage services at Liverpool Lime Street Station. Which wraps up our rather hectic but thoroughly enjoyable weekend at both Liverpool and the Titanic Hotel, both of which we would thoroughly recommend. We have hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out another one of our great videos up here. Thanks again for watching.